Hello my dear students, today we are going to listen to chapter 5 and 6. We said before that chapter 4 ends when Blind Pew and his men came to the end to search for Captain Flynn's map. They found the bells dead and they didn't find the map. Blind Pew asked his men to search about Jim. He thought that he took the map. The men heard the sound of horses coming towards the inn. The men ran off, leaving a blind view behind. Blind view couldn't see where he was going. He fell under one of the horses and died. Now let's see what happened in chapter 5. <coughs> Chapter 5 Squire Trelawney has a plan. The horsemen were government men. Pew and his friends were smugglers. They had a boat not far away. They got to the boat in time and took it out to sea. The head government man, Mr. Dance, came back with us to the Admiral Benbow. I told him about the captain and the sea chest. What were they looking for? Mr. Dance asked. I don't know, I said. Perhaps it was this. I showed him the cloth with the papers in it. I'll take it, he said. I want Dr. Livesey to have it, I said. He is a magistrate. You are right, Mr. Dance answered. He spoke to one of his men. Let this boy ride behind you, he said. I got onto the horse and we all rode away from the inn. I found out that Dr. Livesey was visiting Squire Trelawney, so it was to his house that we rode. The squire was in his library with the doctor. What's this about? the doctor asked. Mr. Dance told him his story. The doctor and the squire listened in silence. When Mr. Dance finished, the squire said, You have done well, Mr. Dance, and you, Jim Hawkins, are a brave boy. The horsemen were government men. Pew and his friends were smugglers. Smugglers means person who hides and moves the object illegally. He works against the law. They got their boat out to the sea. Mr. Dent, the head government man, came back with Jim to Admiral Bimbo, the inn. Jim told him about Captain, uh, Captain Billy and the sea chest. Mr. Dance asked him about what the men looking for. Jim told him that they may be looking for the cloth with the papers in it that he had found and at the bottom of the chest. Mr. Dance wanted to take it, but Jim told him that he wanted Dr. Livesey to have it, to have the map. He is a magistrate, he is a minor judge. So Mr. Dance agrees and asked one of his men to let Jim ride behind him. Then they all went to Dr. Livesey, who was visiting Squire Trelawney. So they went to the squire's house. The, squires, the squire was in his library with the doctor. Mr. Dance told the doctor his story. The doctor and the squire listened in silence. The squire told Jim that they have done well. The squire said, You have done well, Mr. Dance. And you, Jim Hawkins, are a brave boy. Do you have the papers and the piece of cloth? Yes, sir, I said, and I gave them to him. Good, the doctor said. Then he turned to the squire. Squire, he said, the government men must go. They have government business to do. I'd like Jim to stay here. Mr. Dance and the other government men left. Do you know anything about this Captain Flint? The doctor asked the squire. Oh, yes. The squire said, I was on a ship that he attacked. He is a dangerous pirate. He killed many men and stole their treasure. Perhaps then, 
the doctor said. He buried the stolen treasure, and perhaps these papers will tell us where it is. If they do, the squire said, then the three of us will go to Bristol. I can get a ship there to take us to look for it. The doctor took a book and map out from the piece of cloth. The squire studied the book. This book has the names of all the ships Captain Flint attacked and how much money he stole from them. He died a rich man. Now let me see the map. The doctor handed it to the squire. The map was of an island about twelve kilometers long and eight kilometers wide. There was a hill in the middle. On the hill were the words, The Spyglass. There were three crosses in red ink, two in the north of the island and one in the southwest. Next to the last cross were the words, Most of the treasure here. On the back of the paper were the words, Tall tree. Look through spyglass to a point north of north, northeast. Skeleton Island East, Southeast by E. So the squire told Jim and Mr. Dance that they have done well. He also told Jim that he was a brave boy. He asked Jim about the map and Jim gave it to him. The doctor told the squire that the government man must go. They have business to do, and he wanted Jim to stay with them. The government men left, so the doctor asked the squire if he knows anything about Captain Flint. The squire answered, yes, I was on the ship that he attacked, and he was a dangerous pirate. He killed many men and stole their treasure. The doctor said that. Perhaps Captain Flint buried the stolen treasure and perhaps these papers, the map, this map, will tell them about its place. The squire said, if these papers, if this map led them to the treasure's place, so the three of them, the doctor, the squire and Jim, will go to Bristol. The squire can get a ship there to take them to look for the, tre the treasure on the island. The doctor took a book and a map. The squire studied the book. This book has the names of all the ships Captain Flint attacked before and how much money he stole from them. He died as a rich man. The squire asked the doctor to see the map. The doctor gave the map to the squire, and the map was of an island about 12 kilometers long. Why, there was a hill, and this is the description of uh, the island, and uh, where it is. by east. There were more words that I did not understand, but the squire knew what they meant. He said to the doctor, This is all the information we need. We will go to this island. You will come as the ship's doctor, and Jim shall be the cabin boy. Very well, Trelawney, the doctor said. But there is one man I am afraid of. Oh, and who is that, sir? The squire wanted to know. You, sir, the doctor said. You don't know how to keep a secret. There will be men who will do anything to get this map. You must tell no one that we have it. I promise, the squire said. You have my word. So, Jim said that there were more words in the map that he didn't understand, but the squire knew their meaning. He said that they will go to the island. The doctor will be the ship's doctor and Jim will be the cabin boy he will clean and cook on the ship the doctor said that he was afraid of one man the squire asked him who is that man the doctor told him that he was afraid of him afraid of the squire because he doesn't know how to keep secrets the doctor told him that he mustn't tell anybody that 
They had the map because there will be men who will do anything to get this map. The squire promised the doctor to keep this as a secret. Let's see what happened in chapter 6. Chapter 6 Long John Silver Takes Charge The next day Squire Trelawney went to Bristol. I stayed at the squire's house, waiting for news of the ship. Every day I studied the map, learning everything on it. I wanted to remember everything about it. At last a letter came from the squire. He wrote, I have a good ship, and she is ready to sail. Her name is the Hispaniola. Everyone here has helped me. They are as excited as I am about the reason for our journey. I don't like this. He has told people about the treasure, I thought. I remembered Dr. Livesey saying, There is only one man I am afraid of. This was the squire, because he could not keep a secret. I read on. I bought the ship from an old friend, Blandly. Many people here do not like him. They say he will do anything for money. They say I paid too much for the ship. But I believe Blandly is honest. I didn't like the crew, though, so I looked for other men. They were difficult to find. Then I met an old sailor, Long John Silver. I believe he has a wife here and is not poor. I'll get you a crew, Long John Silver said. I'll get you the best crew there is, but I want to sail with you. He has only one leg, so I said, You can be the sh The next day, Squire Trelawney went to Bristol to bring a ship. Jim stayed in the squire's house waiting for news f for, uh, of the ship. He studied the map very well to remember everything about it. At last a letter came from the squire. He said, the squire sent Jim a letter. He wrote, I have a good ship. He Now he got a ship. And it's ready for sale. And its name is Hispaniola. And everybody helped him. So he now he is ready for the journey. Jim doesn't like this. He thought because he knew that the squire told any uh, people about the treasure. And he remembered that Dr. Lefsey told the squire to keep it as a secret because many men will know, will do anything to have the map, to know about the treasure. So he uh, knew that Squire Trelawney didn't keep his secret and he told everybody about the treasure. The squire wrote in his letter that he bought the ship from his old friend Blandly and many people don't like uh, many people doesn't uh, don't like him. And they told that uh, he uh, take uh, um, uh, a lot of money and he paid too much money for the ship. But Squire Trelawney believed that Blandly is honest man. He didn't like the crew and he bring another men or another crew. Other men or other crew. So, they were difficult to find a new crew. He met also an old sailor called Long John Silver. And he has a crew. Long John Silver said that he will get a crew, a best crew. But I want to sail with you he want john silver wanted to sail with the ship and be with the crew so squires told him that he can be Ship's cook. the cook he was happy about this within a few days he found me a crew he didn't like those i already had either so i let them go and now we are ready to sail
That next morning, I went home to the Admiral Benbow to say goodbye to my mother. Tom Redruth, one of the squire's men, came with me. The next evening, we took the coach to Bristol. It was a busy city. There were many ships, and there were sailors everywhere. Squire Trelawney was staying at an inn. It was near where the ship was waiting to sail. Tom and I found the squire on the ship. Welcome, Jim, he said. The doctor came last night, so now we are ready. We can sail tomorrow. Take this letter to Long John Silver, he said. He's staying at the Spyglass Inn. He owns it. I found the inn easily. It was full of sailors. As I walked toward it, a man came out. He had only one leg. Are you Long John Silver? I asked him. I am, young man, and who are you? He said. Jim Hawkins, I said. The cabin boy on the Hispaniola. I gave him the squire's letter. As I did so, another man came out of the inn. I knew who he was. He had two fingers missing on his right hand. That's Black Dog, I cried. Black Dog ran off. Catch him, Ben! Long John Silver shouted to one of the men in the inn. He owes me money! Then he turned to me. Who did you say he was? Black Dog, I said. Didn't Squire Trelawney tell you about him and the other men? So, John Silver, Long John Silver, will be, Squire told him that he will be the cook on the ship because he only has one leg. So he was happy about this. And after a few days, he found a crew. But, uh, Long John Silver told him that he has a crew and they are good men. The next morning, Jim went to Admiral Bimbo to, to say goodbye to his mother. Tom Ridders, one of the squire's men, went with him. So the next evening, Jim took the coach to Bristol. It was busy city and there were many ships and there were sailors everywhere. Squire Trony was staying at an inn. It was near the ship, was waiting to sail. Tom and Jim found Squire on the ship. The Squire welcomed Jim. The doctor came last night, so now they are ready to sail. Take this letter to Long John Silver. The squire told Jim to take this, the letter to Long John Silver. And he told him that he stay at the Spyglass Inn because he own it. So Jim went to Long John Silver and he found him in the Spyglass Inn. It was full of sailors. He, Jim, walked towards the inn, and a, ca a man came out. He was wi he was Long John Silver. He had only one leg. So, Jim Hawkins told him that he was a cabin boy uh, on Hispaniola, and he gave him the squire's letter, and. Another man came out of the inn. Jim knew that man. He had two fingers missing on his left hand. He was Black Dog. So Jim cried, that's Black Dog. So Long John Silver told, shouted to one of his men to, to catch uh, Black Dog. And he told him that he owes him money. So Black Dog ran away. And Jim told uh, Long John Silver that Squire Trelawney, he asked him if Squire Trelawney told him about him and the other men. He did, but I didn't know the man. I've never seen him before. He turned to one of the men who was coming out of the inn. Have you seen that man before, Morgan? He asked him. No, sir, Morgan answered. Do you know his name? No, sir, Morgan replied. Long John Silver was thoughtful. Perhaps I have seen the man before. He came here once with a blind man. Blind Pew, I said. He was one of the men who came to the Admiral Benbow. Aye, 
Long John Silver said. I remember him now. I didn't trust him. At first I didn't trust Long John Silver. What was Black Dog doing at the Spyglass Inn? I asked myself. Was Long John Silver telling me the truth? Then Ben came back. I couldn't catch him, he said. He was too fast for me. Long John was now angry. Let's go and tell Squire Trelawney what's happened, he said. He'll want to know. We went to the inn where the squire and doctor were staying. Long John told them about Black Dog and Blind Pew. And I sent Ben to catch Black Dog, didn't I, Jim? Long John said. Yes, I said. You did, but he got away. There's nothing we can do about it, the squire said. We'll sail this afternoon. Tell the crew to be on the ship by four o'clock. So, Long John Silver sent one of his me uh, men to catch Black Dog. So, uh, uh, one of uh, his men came out of the end. He was Morgan and he asked him, Have you seen this man before? Black Dog before? He said no. And he didn't know his name or anything about him. Long John Silver was thoughtful. He thought about this man, about Black Dog. Perhaps he seen him before. He came here. He told he told Jim that he came that Black Dog came uh, at the end the spyglass in once with a blind man with blind view and he was one of the men who came to Admiral Bimbo so Jim told him that he was blind view was one of the men who came to Admiral Bimbo John Silver said I remembered him now I didn't trust him Jim didn't trust long John Silver he thought that John Silver was not uh, uh, telling the truth. What was Black Duke doing at the Spyglass Inn? He thought, Jim thought to himself, what he was doing here. Was Long John Silver telling the truth? So then Ben came back and he didn't, he couldn't catch Black Dog. He said he was too fast for him. He couldn't catch him. Long John Silver was now angry and he told him to go to tell the squire what happened. He will want to know all about this. So Long John Silver told them about Black Dog and Blind Pew. And that he sent Ben to catch him but uh, he couldn't catch him so the squire told him that they will sail this afternoon and he should go and tell the crew to be on the ship by four o'clock I'll do that Long John Silver answered and walked away we're lucky to have that man on our crew, the squire said. He's going to be very useful. He smiled. Now let's go to the ship and make sure everything is ready. So Long John Silver went to tell the crew that they will sail by four o'clock. So the squire said that they are lucky to have Long John Silver on their crew. So he said that Long John Silver will be useful for them. And he said, let's go to the ship and make sure everything is ready. Now they will sail. Please study this well, the, uh, the, these chapters very well. And next time we will go to answer the we are going to answer the questions from the booklet thank you goodbye